Hi and welcome to my channel. In my last video I showed you the mounting of this monster 250mm soft focus Fuji portrait lens to a lens board for my 5.4 MPP and I have some results that I can share with you. Before that though uh, I'm going to show you a bargain that I picked up a little while ago and uh, make a few suggestions how if you want to get into Studio Flash you can do it quite cheaply and uh, without going a bit crispy around the edges and singeing yourself due to electrical problems. Let's get into it. Well, back in the day I didn't use Studio Flash a great deal. Being a theatre photographer, I did most of what I did by natural light. Sometimes I used Studio Flash, and because it wasn't very often, I used to hire them in most of the time. I think I had an old Courtney head kicking around uh, just for occasional use, but I didn't really you know, warrant having a dedicated flash kit. Now things are a bit different, and because I'm uh, producing photographs for my entertainment and for your entertainment as well, um, I thought it was about time I got a flash kit to go with the 5.4 camera and the other formats uh, that I can shoot some studio work to show you. I've been casting around on eBay and I came across a three head. Interfit um, rig, second hand, which I put in a, a bid on, and I was amazed that I got the whole rig for around £60, which was insane. Um, these are the heads. Um, I'll show you a photograph of the whole kit. I got a couple of stands, three flash heads, um, they're proper computerized flash heads and they all work nicely. Um, on a serious note, please, please be careful if you are picking up flash heads second hand, um, get them checked over. Um, I do quite a lot of electronics work myself so I, I can actually check over stuff like this. But I'd get an electrician to look at it. You're dealing with high voltages and um, old gear. Um, yeah, uh, you don't want to end up uh, getting um, electrocuted. Anyway, this kit works very well, apart from one small issue, which the modeling light bulbs were incredibly pathetic at 60 watt. Um, um, I since doing the photo shoot with the 5.4, which I'm going to show you the results from, I've upgraded those to 100 watt bulbs. And there's a tremendous difference in, in the light output. And that should make focusing with the larger format cameras much, much easier. So these, I think, will get yeah, actually featured quite a lot on this channel because I want to show you um, lighting techniques and um, techniques for working with models, etc. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a case as a do as I say rather than do as I do because I made a couple of errors on the pictures you'll see which I fully own up to because um, I was doing it in a rush the first time I'd worked in a studio and sort of environment with 5.4 and I was running around um, like a headless chicken trying to get things stopped down, um, check for focus, um, but anyway, as a first set of results from the 250mm soft focus lens, um, small drum roll, what follows is my lovely wife who decided to, um, well actually she didn't decide to, I persuaded her to hop in front of the camera to take a quick couple of shots um, just to test the lens out. And here we go. I had quite a lot to think about taking these pictures. Um, the huge bellows draw required 
with the 250mm soft focus Fuji meant that I had uh, three quarters of a stop um, bellows extension factor to take account of. Also, uh, the 250mm lens with the red marked sink strainer that's fitted in it, um, basket, sink strainer, whatever you want to call it, um, has an effective aperture of f10. So I was working a bit on the raw edge when I took these because the indicated exposure with two of the interfit flash heads um, with uh, shoot through brollies on either side of the camera was uh, f16 and um, I was looking at f10 on the lens uh, with bellows extension and uh, I was uh, 100 ISO film so there wasn't an awful lot of manoeuvre room. I actually managed to nail the exposure quite well I think um, but um, I did a little bit of manipulation just to make the image look a bit prettier for myself. Um, there is an issue the, the hand uh, against the jawline, the, the fingers should have been spread. Yeah, um, literally, I was concentrating too hard on just getting a result and getting some film through the camera. So, the results from this big beastie, um, aside from mm, difficulties in using it for the first time, uh, which is more down to the fact I've never used anything quite like this before. Certainly from the image, fantastic, um, gentle, soft focus. Um, just what I was looking for. Um, looking forward to using it more, um, trying out um, what different effects can be had um, from different apertures with it and bringing the aperture down below the level of the strainer. Um, and generally working with it. I'm very, very pleased with it indeed. So what I can go on to is how I actually exposed this shot, which is quite interesting. I took the meter readings for that shot on this Shepherd flash meter using the incident light cone, dome, uh, I find that's quite handy for portraits. Uh, I could have used the Gossen uh, meter, which has got um, flash uh, connection into it, um, but I'm not used to using a spot meter, particularly at the moment, and, and I didn't want to overcomplicate things for myself, now, being a, a bear of a small brain. Um, but I managed to hit it pretty close, I think. Well, I will have to admit, this has been a slightly more fraught episode than normal. Um, behind the scenes here, I've had my card reader die, I've uh, possibly got a corrupt memory card. Um, everything has done um, its best to make it a difficult process. But anyway, I got through it. It was always going to be a bit shorter than normal, uh, as it was just to keep you guys up to date with how I was getting on with the 250mm Fuji soft focus lens. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, think about uh, giving us a like, and if you want to see more, then think about subscribing. Alright, till next time, take care, bye.